Good afternoon, I'm Chad Nimmer. Today I'm going to be pre presenting on the topic of excellence. While talking to you all about excellence, I'm going to draw on some past experiences, both from my 10 years of experience coaching boys and girls basketball from grades third through high school, uh, as well as my 16 year military career. I've uh, been fortunate enough uh, to be serve alongside several great men and women who I've learned a lot about uh, and a lot from in terms of the pursuit of excellence. So let us first define excellence and Webster's defines excellence as the quality of being excellent, state of possessing good qualities in an eminent degree, exalted merit, superiority in virtue. I think in order to accomplish excellence as a coach, um, you have to, to kind of put it in your own words, what, what, what excellence looks like to you. Um, and in the reading, A Season of Life, I think Biff says it best when he says, what more can you, can you ask of your, of your athletes? Um, if you're not always going to be fortunate enough to serve you know, our coach, the most talented players, but as long as they're giving you all they can, maximum effort, um, I think that's all we can really ask of them a a as their coach. And by giving all you have and through maximum effort, you should be able to accomplish any individual goals you have set out for yourself as well as those team goals along the way. When excellence is portrayed, it should inspire those who see it. And this is a big thing that I always tell my athletes in practice or in games is take someone with you. The expression, take somebody with you. Um, in order to inspire those to your left and right, your effort needs to be maximum because nobody's really going to be inspired when they see someone going at it 60% of what they have. But if you're putting forth 100% every single time, every time you step out on the playing field or in the classroom, regardless of the environment. Um, if, if you put forth that maximum effort, you're gonna inspire people just to be better, regardless of what the task is. And again, drawing back to that, that quote in Season of Life, what more could we possibly ask of him? I think that is the question you should ask yourself of your athletes. Salvador Gunta, he served in the military. He was deployed in Eastern Afghanistan. And boy, did this young man portray excellence on the battlefield. His squad was going about a patrol when they were ambushed and they began taking heavy small arms fire. And Specialist Gunta saw his squad leader, the man that was leading them on this patrol, he saw him go down and without any pause or hesitation, he went after his squad leader and began rendering first aid. And once he patched his squad leader up, he noticed off in the distance in the horizon, he saw what looked to be two enemy carrying away one of his battle buddies, dragging him away. And they're still taking small arms fire at this time. And Specialist Gunta, who's not even in really in a position of leadership, without any guidance from anyone, he goes after the enemy. You see in the military, we have, we have a, a set of values, our ethos, that we refer to as the warrior ethos. And one of them is, I will never leave a fallen comrade. And I guarantee you this crossed Salvador Gunta's mind when he saw his battle buddy being dragged away by the enemy. So he pursued after him and he eliminates the enemy. He gets his battle buddy back to safety. Uh, and because this act of valor and this act of bravery, well beyond the call of duty for specialist Gunta or any specialist in the armed forces, he was awarded our nation's highest honor, the Medal of Honor. I think the question that when you ask what more could he have possibly done, the answer is nothing. He, he risked his own life uh, for the safety uh, of his battle buddies. The Parable of Talents, Matthew 25 verses 14 through 30. Again, this, this goes back to a season of life when Coach Biff is talking to his players on the hill um, and really giving them, giving them a lesson of, of give me everything you have. Uh, and the parable talks about 
it doesn't matter if you have 10 talents. The person that's give ten, that has 10 talents needs to give 10 talents worth of effort in what they do. The person that has only two talents is just as valuable as that person with 10 as long as they're giving their two talents worth of effort because in the end they're giving all they have. And, and Coach Biff talks about how he'll never, he'll never make cuts when he's forming his 53-man roster for football. He'll never make cuts solely based off of talents as long or, or off of athletic ability as long as those individuals are giving them all they have. And I thought that was, that was neat, and that's something that I'm definitely going to draw from going forward uh, as a coach and a leader. So attaining excellence, how, how do we give individuals, how do we get individuals to give us everything they have? Because not everyone's gonna just walk into a gym and give me that maximum effort. I think you have to build some trust, you have to build some rapport with them before they're gonna just pour it all out there for you. And it, it takes time. It's the road or the journey to excellence, it's just that, it's a journey. It's not gonna happen overnight. Um, it, it's, it's definitely gonna, it, it's gonna take time. Legendary coach, uh, the late Pat Summit, multiple national college basketball championships uh, at her time at University of Tennessee. One of her many uh, famous quotes out there, she said, they don't care how much you know unless they know how much you care. Think about that. They don't care how much you know unless they know how much you care. And if you ever want to experience excellence as a leader of a team or a, a, a leader of a member of people that you lead at work, they need to know that you care about them more than just beyond the playing field or beyond you know, your success at, at, at your place of employment, that you really care about them, that you know them, that you, you know their interests or their hobbies, you ask them how their weekend was. Um, and once you once they realize that you really do care about them, that's when you can really set out on that journey of excellence and, and capture it. This is a, an image here of Coach Steve Jones. He coaches a high school football team, a highly successful high school football team here in, in the Fox Cities, Kimberly High School. Um, they have the longest active winning streak of any high school football team in the country. It's currently at 70 games. Coach Jones has been with Kimberly now for seven years, and in those seven years, he's accomplished excellence. Um, they've won five consecutive uh, state championships. Um, he's been named National High School Coach of the Year three times now. He was runner-up for the Don Shula Award, uh, one of the highest honors you can get as a high school football coach. And I'm fortunate enough to be able to talk and connect with Jones a couple times a month, and we talk about all sorts of stuff, but I'll never forget one of our first conversations, and it was just about, I'm in a lot of high, different high schools uh, for my job with the military, and there's just something about being around the Kimberly Papermakers. And I asked Coach Jones about that, and he says, the key to their success isn't great quarterback play year after year. It isn't having an awesome offensive line year after year. The key to their success there um, as a football team and just as a school district in general is they're a family. And family to them means something a little different. It's an acronym. Forget about me, I love you. And it's about getting, getting everyone to the finish line together, setting goals together, holding each other accountable together, that peer-to-peer -peer accountability is really special. That's, that's excellence when a player can hold another player accountable when they're doing a line drill and they're running lines and they realize, hey, you weren't running as hard as you, I know you can. And they kind of call each other out and keep each other in check. That's excellence. Family is something that we've incorporated into our, our coaching philosophy out at Hortonville. It's one of our mantras that we live by now. Be selfless, inspire those around you, kind of get over yourself a little bit, make it more about the person to your left and right. Um, so
So how do we recognize excellence? I think this is a, t a skill in itself, recognizing excellence and rewarding excellence in the military. We talked about we have different awards that we put on our, on our uniform uh, for, for acts of excellence. Um, in sport, there's compliments that you can dish out as a coach. Uh, maybe you have awards that you do at the end of the season to recognize uh, those, those acts of excellence. You have your team MVP or whatever. But one thing I found that was really powerful to do as a coach is, is finding excellence where it's not always easy to find. Uh, for example, we'll get in, in the locker room after maybe a crazy comeback. Maybe we just overcame a 20 point deficit at halftime and we had one of our players that was just lights out, just phenomenal, filled it up in the second half. Uh, and they were per no doubt a key to our success. And instead of getting in the locker room and just praising that individual for, for going bonkers uh, in the second half, I'll, I'll try to call out those individuals that had maybe a little less opportunity. Maybe they were outstanding teammates like you see here on the Kansas Jayhawk bench. Maybe they were standing up every time we scored. Maybe they were getting teammates water uh, during timeouts. And I'll recognize those players for giving me all they had uh, during that game before I go in and start praising, and I will praise uh, those players that, that were out on the court making, making some of the plays. Um, and I think that's really important. That goes to just developing that, that winning culture, um, is, is recognizing it in all different areas of the game and of sport. So in conclusion here, talked a lot about excellence. I think the bottom line is we know what Webster's, we know how they define excellence. I think it's important for coaches and leaders to define what excellence means to them first um, and what it, what it looks like, not just in, in their area that they coach or that they lead, but in, in are, other areas of life. Um, I think it's important to reward it and acknowledge excellence and at the same time, understand that it doesn't happen overnight, that it's going to be a journey, that you are going to experience shortcomings and failures. Uh, but, but when you experience excellence in the end, those shortcomings and failures, those were learning moments, and it made it all worth it. Thanks for your time. Uh, God bless.